Hello and welcome back to BioClass Bites. In this video, we are going to talk about microscopy. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like and share this video. If you still remember, um, I presented this species uh, of algae during our first video on introduction to biology. So this is my favorite algae, Volvox globator. I've mentioned that they are um, it's actually a colonial um, algae and this is how they, they exist. So this, each individual dot that you see here is actually one alga, one individual. But it cannot survive alone. It forms a colony with hundreds and thousands of other alga and they become this one sphere, right? That's one colony. So this big colony is what we call the mother colony. This is the parent organism. And when it reproduces, um, several daughter colonies will form inside of it. So you have here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Nine daughter colonies inside one mother colony. I really find it interesting and fascinating that such a, such a small creature, such a small organism could come up with such a um, complicated um, manner of existence and complicated manner of reproduction. So that's, uh, that, that's what um, makes Volvox Globator fascinating to me. To learn more about microscopes, I recommend that you watch this video entitled Microscope, the Tube that Changed the World. And this one, um, and another video um, entitled Microscopes and How to Use a Light Microscope from Amoeba Sisters. Again, linked in the description below. The word microscope was taken from the Greek word micros, meaning small, and scopein, meaning to look. So to look at small things or small organisms. So we use um, microscope uh, to see objects that are too tiny, too tiny for the naked eye. So microscopes can be separated into different types. You have your optical theory microscope, electron microscope, and scanning probe microscope. So in op optical microscope, we use our eyes to view the specimen. In electron microscope, we, we use um, big computers and we see the action of electrons bouncing off of the surface to create the image. And in scanning probe microscope, we scan the surface of the specimen. Um, each type actually creates different um, uh, images of the same organism and different preparations are needed to produce the image. So the most common type of microscope and the first one invented is called the optical microscope. So this is the one that is, that is mostly used in schools. So this uh, uses one or more lenses to produce an enlarged image of the object. This image gives us um, a view of the, the evolution of microscopes over the ages. So during um, Liu Vinho's time, around 1600s, this is what his microscope looked like. This is just a handheld paddle wherein he just placed a lens here to view the specimen. Um, after uh, hundreds of years, then we have here a handheld microscope. So here you have one lens here and then you have another lens here. So that's what they used to view the specimen. Now, around 1800s, 1865, you have here the first major type of um, a microscope that uses two lenses. So you have here the early ocular lens, the early body tube, arm, diaphragm stage. And then you have here, um, another, this is where you place the specimen. So it was a bit, um, it was an effective in a, in a way. Uh, then in 1925, uh, you have uh, a dissecting microscope. This allowed biologists and scientists to actually prod and dissect the specimen as they view it under the lenses. And this, this is a, a common modern day um, electric microscope. Uh, still an optical microscope, you still have to look through it, but it has two, uh, two set of, um, uh, it has uh, two lenses, the optical, um, the ocular lens and the objective lens here. Most of the time, modern microscopes are already, they already have their own light source. So instead of using the, a mirror to reflect light, they have a lamp here that you can turn on and off. They are usually rechargeable, so very easy to use. So this uh, shows us the development of the microscope still over time. So the first compound microscope was around 1500, 1595. It's just a body tube with, um, lens at one end. 
Leuvenhoek's microscope from 1600s just looked like a small paddle that he placed near his eye to view the specimen. Hook's microscope already has a body tube as seen here. Then um, this one has the first interchangeable magnification for the objective lens. Then you have your modern light microscope. This is what I, I was showing a while ago. It has it has its own um, light source, usually rechargeable, and um, actually ha very handy and very easy to use. And then the electron microscope, like what I've mentioned um, in the in one of the uh, slides before, it uses the action of the electron to create the image of the specimen. We can see here human sperm cells viewed under three different types of microscopes. Okay. Uh, so first, these are sperm cells um, when viewed under a light microscope, okay? Uh, then letter B, this is how sperm cells look like when seen under transmission electron microscope. And letter C, uh, this is how the surface of um, sperm cells would look like when viewed under scanning electron microscope. Uh, we, on this side, we can see size ranges of cells, okay? Um, so, um, the smallest um, bacteria okay, is around 100 nanometers, okay? so that's around that uh, range. Uh, so, between this um, small bacteria up to um, common uh, plant and animal cells, human egg cells, frog egg, egg cells, the best type of microscope to use for that would be the light microscope and this is what um, we will use okay, with, uh, when we have our laboratory experiments. Now, for, various, for smaller organisms and smaller um, structures or more detailed structures of these organisms, plus viruses and ribosomes, proteins and lipids, uh, then what scientists use are electron microscopes. Okay? So, um, again, now when we conduct our experiment, what we will use would be the light microscope. Um, and then, uh, what we can actually see without microscopes are somewhere between one, uh, one um, millimeter up to 10 meters. Okay, so that's the human height. So, between this range, we can use our unaided eye um, in viewing these specimens. Now, these are more um, examples of cells when viewed or specimens when viewed under uh, different types of microscopes. So, this one is for light microscopes, okay? We can find um, unstained, we can, we can actually see unstained specimen okay, using the light microscope or with the help of stains okay, or dyes, it allows us to enhance our view of those cells. So, these are human human cheek okay so the the in uh, the lining of your of your mouth okay so these are human cheek epithelial cells without stain but if we use dyes to stain them this is how they look like uh, so mostly this is what we can do um, at our laboratory now face contrast um, microscopy um, shows variations in density within the specimen okay so that allows us to see uh, more um, structures of living unpigmented cells. Now, uh, differential interference contrast microscopy um, shows is, is an example of this, still using um, uh, human cheek epithelial cells. So this allows the image of the cells to appear almost three-dimensional. Uh, so fluorescence, um, using fluorescent dyes or um, antibodies, okay? that absorb ultraviolet uh, radiation and emit visible light. And then this one is um, uh, con con confocal. Okay? The, the top image is, a, is using a standard fluorescent microscope. Okay? Uh, this time, they use laser for optical sectioning to, elim to eliminate out-of-focus light from a thick sample and for 3D reconstruction of specimens. Now, these, uh, most of the slides that will follow are taken from Science Source Images, a Facebook page that I follow. They have a lot of interesting um, and very beautiful um, specimen images um, taken under different types of microscopes. So, this one 
uh, you can actually visit um, science source i'll provide their link uh, to their to their facebook uh, page in the description below so this one are kidney docs kidney collecting docs okay so there these are small artery arterial in a cross section okay then these are wheat rust or a fungal disease using light microscope of course with dyes these are goblet cells in the small intestine okay so very very beautiful very beautifully colored beautifully dyed specimen this what the spe the uh, microscope that they use here is a um a color enhanced transmission electron microscope now, for electron microscopy, okay, um, one common type of this would be the scanning electron microscope. So, what they do is they show a 3D image of the surface of the specimen. It allows us to see the surface, not just the cross-section, but the surface of that specimen, okay? Uh, so, usually you will see this label, SEM. It means what the what um, microscope was used was a scanning electron um, microscope TEM is for transmission electron microscope okay a trans transmission electron microscope um, profiles a thin section of a specimen so very very thin section um, so there then below see here is another scanning electron micrograph okay and you can actually see the surface of the specimen a, a transmission electron microscope has um, creates very thin images of that um, specimen. Still from science source images, these are B pollen. Okay? Um, it shows us uh, diff, um, pollen in the pollen basket on a bee's leg. So this is the bee, bee and its legs, and then attached to its legs are this pollen. As okay? so you can see, there, there are different species of uh, plants here are shown by the variety of, of uh, pollen grains. Now this one is a dust mite on the tip of a needle using color enhanced scanning electron microscope. Okay, very beautiful. These are tracheal, tracheal windpipe or tracheal or windpipe lining. Okay, so the lining of your trachea or windpipe and here they use a color enhanced scanning electron microscope to create to see the the 3d image and the surface of this um, um, lining of cells now this is an uh, por foraminiferan an amoeba okay so um, again they they use a scanning electron microscope to see the details of its surface okay details of its surface um, in 3d representation now, this one is um, still a color-enhanced scanning electron microscope, micrograph, okay, of a parasitic wasp. You can actually see the details of its face, even the surface of its face using SEM. These are the rods and cones of the retina, okay, found in your eye, still scanning, colored-enhanced scanning electron microscope. Now, this is tardigrade. I'm pretty sure you've seen this in social media and even in YouTube. They, they are quite a very resilient um, species okay, that can survive um, being um, desiccated or, or being in, very, in a very toxic environment. Um, they are also called water bears. No? They are found all throughout the world, including regions of extreme temperature. So they are seen here using a scanning electron microscope. Now, this microscope is what we should be familiar with because this is what we, uh, what we usually use in school. So, we call it a compound microscope. Compound, not simple. Compound because it uses two lenses here and here. And it uses light to enlarge the image. It falls under the category of optical microscope because we use our eyes and light microscope because we use a light source. So, it has two systems of lenses. The ocular lens for number one or eyepiece lens. That, 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 that's, uh, that's the lens that we look into. And then the objective lens that can be changed. Uh, this one is the closest to the specimen. This allows us to enlarge the object. 
Now, let's try to identify the parts of a compound light microscope. So, um, kindly pause the video at this point and try to look for the names of the, of the following parts of the microscope. Okay, once you're done, let's try to look at the answers. So, this one is called, I've mentioned this a while ago, the ocular lens or the eyepiece. This is the lens that you look through into the microscope. So, this is where you put one of your eye, one of your eyes to look into the microscope. If um, if your microscope has two ocular lens, then you put both eyes in this area. Okay. Then you have your body tube. It connects the eyepiece to the objective lens. So these are your objective lenses. So we call that body tube. Then you have your arm to support the tube. It connects also the tube to the base. Okay. So this is the arm of the microscope. Stage is the plat platform or flat platform where you place your slides. So this is where you put your slides. You secure it using the stage clips. You can, um, you can lift it and then secure the slide inside or on top of it. Then that we have two types of um, adjustment knobs, coarse adjustment and fine adjustment. So coarse adjustment for huge adjustment, it moves the body tube up and down. Okay, so... For huge adjustment, when you really need to focus, you use the course adjustment. But when you have already focused the image and you just want to you you just want some small adjustment, then you use the fine adjustment. Then you have the base which supports the entire microscope. The revolving nose piece is this part. Okay, it revolves, it, it moves around it in a circular manner that allows you to choose which objective lens to use. So objective lens are attached. To the revolving nose piece, you always have three um, objective lens for 4x magnification, 10x magnification, and 40x magnification. Respectively, they are the low power objective, middle power objective, and high power objective. I've mentioned a while ago, we use stage clips to secure the slide. Diaphragm, um, this is the part of the microscope that allows light to enter the stage or to enter upward into the slide. So, most of the time, students are, are complaining that they cannot see anything under the microscope, only to check that the diaphragm is closed. You can actually move this around and see which is the best, um, best hole or best circle that will allow the best light to pass through to view the specimen. And light source, this allows the light to be reflect, le reflected. If it is not an, an electronic microscope, it usually has a mirror here. That's what you use to focus the specimen. If this um, an electric microscope, it usually um, has a light bulb here as light source. Now, these are the steps uh, on how to use the microscope. To be honest, uh, discussing this here on YouTube is actually, you know, counterproductive because the only way for you to actually learn how to use the microscope is when you're using the microscope. It will It will give you a better sense of of what I'm talking about here if you're actually using a microscope. However, just for inter just for the purpose of discussion, so this is how we use the microscope. So, as seen in figure one, always carry with the microscope with two hands, one holding the arm, one holding the base. Re turn the revolving nose piece here, and you will know that it is in the right place when you feel a click, if you feel that satisfying click into position. Then place the microscope slide on the stage, and fasten it, you can lift this too, and then slide the, the glass slide here and then secure it using, using the stage clips. Using the course adjustment, you can actually move the body tube up or down to lower uh, the objective lens um, as here, lower the objective lens as long as it does not touch the, the slide, okay? So you can, use, you can use the course and fine adjustment for that. Um, you also have to look through the eyepiece and adjust the mirror at the diaphragm. Make sure that it is open and that it's allow it allows the greatest amount of light. Then you can once you've done the course adjustment, you can actually use the fine adjustment for finer focusing. Um, you can move the microscope around so that the image will be at the center of the field of view. Um, the important thing is do not allow that the lens to touch the slide because that's the that's a, that's a recipe for disaster that can actually break the slide and the specimen will be destroyed. 
So the proper way to use a microscope is to look through the eyepiece with one eye and keep the other eye open. So both eyes should be open. Um, if you have to close your one eye, um, it's okay. However, uh, that will just cause strain in your eye. So it's recommended that you use both eyes. Do not touch the parts of the lenses with your fingers, especially fingerprints could damage the lens. And when finished, you have to return the slide into this position, uh, the microscope into this position. Actually, the arm sometimes the arm the arm can move on, can move forward or backward to allow better, uh, more convenient way to look. To familiarize yourselves with um, the steps on how to use a microscope, I recommend that you watch this video from Fresno State entitled Biology 10 Basic Microscope Setup and Use. I'll provide the link in the description below. Now, using the microscope is not enough. You also have to know how to compute for the total magnification that you are using. A while ago, I mentioned that we have three, obje three types of objective lenses and they show us different views of the specimen. Here are, those, here are the examples of using the objective lenses and what they see under the microscope. So this one is what we usually see when we use the low power objective. This is how big um, this coin is. So the low power objective will always have a 4x magnification. Okay? For it, it magnifies the specimen four times. So if you're using um, an ocular lens, if you're using an ocular lens, with a 10x magnification plus, plus a low power objective, it gives you a total of 40x magnification. I'll explain later. Middle power objectives allows us to zoom, to zoom closer to the object. It will always have 10x. These, these are definite. These are constant, okay? Definite measurements. A middle power objective will always have 10x magnification. It means that it magnifies the specimen 10 times its original size. So this is how it looks like. But if you zoom in at using high power objective, uh, it will always have a 40x magnification, meaning it magnifies the specimen 40 times its original size. So if you're using a 10x magnification, then you will have a total of 40x magnification. So, how do we compute for that? So, if you're low power objective, if you're using low power objective, it will always have this value for x. You just have to multiply that with the um, with the magnification of your ocular lens. Usually, you can find this written on this part of the ocular lens. Uh, it sometimes it, you can see there 10x or 5x. So that gives you the magnification of the ocular lens. So just multiply that with your low power objective to give you the total magnification. At 4x magnification, you will be able to see five up to 5 millimeters. So, so that's how you do it. You just multiply the objective with the ocular lens. For middle power objective, it will always have a 10x magnification. So if you're using a 10x ocular lens, 10 times 10, it gives you 100x or 100 times magnification. It means that you're looking 100 times the original size of the specimen, allowing you to see up to 2 millimeters. High power objective will always have 40x magnification. If you multiply that with your ocular lens, you will always uh, it will give you 400x um, or 400 times magnification. You'll able you will be able to see up to 0 0.5 0 0.45 millimeters. So let's try this quick uh, pop quiz to see um, how we compute for total magnification. So for example, if you're using a 5x ocular lens with a low power objective, so that's an automatic 4x magnification. So that gives you 5 times 4, a 20x magnification or what you're seeing right now is being magnified 20 times its original size. If you're using still the same um, ocular lens with 5x magnification, then you're using a middle power objective. That's a 10, always 10x magnification. So 5 times 10, that gives you 50x or 50 times magnification. It means that what you're seeing is magnified and large 50 times. Then if you're using the same ocular lens, then a high power objective. Um, so that's 5 times 40, it will give you 200x or 200 times magnification. The object that you're seeing 
is magnified 200 times its original size. So these are just some tips on how to make a good drawing. So first, you always have to use a pencil, not a ball pen. First, you can erase pens, a pencil mark if you made a, a mistake. And you can shade, shade in areas more easily with a pencil. Um, so compare that to a ball pen. Each drawing must include clear and proper labels of the parts um, as, as, as you research more about the specimen. Um, and then include the specimen name as written on the slide, as a slide label as well as the magnification of your specimen. So for example, usually this is, this is um, where your drawing will be placed. This is where you will draw your specimen. So don't forget your slide number, the name of the specimen, which, which objective did you use, and then the computation of the total magnification together with a brief description of the specimen that you saw okay so this is where you usually put that now how to make a wet mount this one again um, just the same as using the microscope the best way to learn it is to actually do it now just for the purpose of discussion so this is how you usually make a wet mount or this is how you prepare a specimen for slide um, to be viewed under the microscope so you gather a thin slice of whatever your specimen is. Make sure that it's, it is so thin that if you actually put the cover slip on top, if this is your slide, specimen, and cover slip, the cover slip will lay flat. Okay? It will not, it will not wobble. Okay? Like this one. It means that it is too thick. So, it has to be so thin that the cover slip will lay flat. So these are examples of specimens you might see under the microscope. So this is a plant root tip. As you can see here, um, the cell walls are, are dyed or colored uh, green, while the nucleus is, deeply, is colored in deep purple. So you can see the individual cells here with their own cell wall and their own nucleus inside. Some of the cells are even undergoing cell division, mitosis, which we will talk about in the second quarter. So these are um, onion cells. So as you can see here, you have here the cell wall, then the nucleus inside, and then um, the organelles are the rest of the organelles are actually too small to be seen in this magnification. So Helianthus stem, so sunflower stem. So if you cross, if you actually do a cross section of the of the stem and then you dye um, the cells, so this is it how it will look like. So this is the circle of the stem, but you cut it um, um, across horizontally. Then this is what you see under the microscope. So different types of cells. Okay. Uh, smooth muscle cells. So you can see the elongated nuclei, nucleus or nuclei if there are several in one cell. Small intestines. So, okay, so this is a cross section of the small intestine. So these are the villi. These are the protrusions, projections that makes it possible for the small intestine to absorb the, the nutrients from the food that we eat. Human blood smear, so these are the red blood cells, okay, that you see here, so seen under the microscope. Now, these are very interesting sites. These are virtual mic microscope sites. The first one is from um, NC Bio Network, okay? Uh, you can actually go to the site and then manipulate the virtual microscope and see specimens um, under the microscope. So I'll provide the link in the description below. And this one is a histology guide, virtual microscopy laboratory, similar to um, science search images. Okay, um, You can actually see beautiful scanning electron micrographs and other, even TEMs of specimens. Again, linked in the description below. So, so let's try to identify the following slides based on the examples we've seen a while ago. So of course, this one is very easy. These are examples of letter D, onion cells. Okay, so cell wall, nucleus. These are, this is actually an image or a cross-section of a helianthus stem. This one, we've seen this a while ago, are your red blood cells as seen in the blood smear. These are frog ovaries. Okay? Frog ovaries. Amazing. These are cheek cells. Okay? In, inside the lining of your mouth. Cheek cells. Okay? 
So for your reflective journal log, I recommend that you watch this video entitled Award-Winning Award Footage of the Microscopic World Around Us. Um, hopefully, it will uh, let you appreciate more the different images and different specimens that we can see using different types of microscopes. I will provide the link in the description below. That ends our video. I hope you learned something new. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like and share this video. Till next time, goodbye.